Week 10 fantasy football running back tier list. I'm going to be breaking down my top 36 running backs for this week, going through usage trends and injuries and bye weeks and all that good stuff to help you guys set your fantasy football lineups. If you enjoy, leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here. Now let's get into it. All right, so let's get into the tier list. We're going to kick things off with the players that are on bye this week. So if you guys have DeAndre Swift, Isaiah Pacheco, Raheem Mostert, Devon Achain, Daryl Henderson, Kyron Williams, the Rams, Chiefs, Eagles, and Dolphins are all on bye this week. So a lot of running backs taken out of the pool, going to water down the position in general. So we're going to have to dig a little bit deeper for some of those start-sit decisions. Hopefully you guys aren't too screwed at this position. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have some of those running backs. Um, So let's get things kicked off with the will they play tier. So these are the guys that are coming into the week with some injury question marks. And we do have one guy that's listed pretty much truly as questionable. Um, Two quick injury updates. We do have Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans already listed out with an ankle issue. It is going to be the second straight game that he is going to be missing. So fire up your Devin Singletary. I'll talk about him later on in the video. And then we have Khalil Herbert, who was activated off of injured reserve for Thursday Night Football, but he did not suit up. So by week 11, you should be able to use this guy into your lineup. But we did see Deontay Foreman obviously get most of the work, score a lot of fantasy points, make sure that Khalil Herbert is not still on your waiver wire. Not exactly sure how this backfield is going to shake out with how well Foreman's been playing, but I do expect Khalil Herbert to resume the lead role for the most part. So uh, make sure he is not available in your league. Only one guy that is truly a question mark that we're going to dig into in this will they play tier, and that's James Conner. James Conner coming off of IR himself. He's practiced in a limited fashion all week, and the team actually cut Tony Jones Jr., who they signed about a week or two ago, to help fill out their running back position. It's a good indicator, I think, that he's going to play, the fact that they cut one of their running backs. And of course, now we have Kyler Murray returning for this offense. So it's no longer the starting running back in Clayton Toon's offense. It's now the starting running back in Kyler Murray's offense. And James Conner would probably fit right ahead of Kenneth Walker in the high-end RB2s tier, as I'll talk about later on in the video, should he be active. So if you're wondering if James Conner's ready to go, he's not on a pitch count, he would be a top 18 running back probably in my rankings and a guy that I'm definitely starting this week. So let's get into the tier list itself. We have the locked-in running back starts. Of course, these guys are always in your lineup, the running backs 1-12. to Just going to highlight who has good matchups, who has uh, high-scoring game environments and all that good stuff because we want to know who might underperform Perform, who might overperform, and uh, so on and so forth. So the running backs that have good matchups this week of this group, we have Joe Mixon, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, Jonathan Taylor, Brees Hall, and Bijan Robinson. All of these guys are playing, you know, bottom half of the league type of running back matchups. So keep that in mind. The elite running backs in high scoring games, we have David Montgomery and Austin Eckler in that uh, Lions Chargers game. We have Tony Pollard, uh, high implied point total against the Giants. Um, The Bengals-Texans game is expected to be pretty high scoring, so Joe Mixon definitely in a good spot there. The Jaguars and 49ers expected to have about 44.5 points there as well, so Christian McCaffrey and ETN both in high scoring game environments. And then Bijan Robinson, I think that Cardinals and Falcons game could shoot out potentially, so um, he is in a high scoring game environment as well. And then some guys that you maybe want to temper expectations for of this elite group, Derrick Henry, Aaron Jones, Travis ETN, Christian McCaffrey, and Austin Eckler. I mean, like I said, um, Christian McCaffrey and ETN in a high scoring game environment as is Austin Eckler but the matchup itself is a little bit difficult on both sides of the ball there in that Jags 49ers game so uh, I also like to highlight a guy or two from this uh, from these tiers to uh, talk about their usage recently and none other than Bijan Robinson is worth highlighting he is my RB6 on the week a lot of people talking about Bijan this week from a dynasty lens from a redraft lens could this perhaps be the Bijan Robinson bounce back game I think it will be. The Cardinals rank 28th against fantasy running backs in adjusted fantasy points allowed. The last couple matchups, Bijan Robinson has not had an easy time against some really strong run defenses. The Vikings, the Buccaneers, the Titans, that has been three of his last four uh, opponents. And those defenses all rank top 10 against fantasy running backs with the Vikings and Bucks actually ranking top three against fantasy running backs. So when you look at Bijan's workload, the work is still there. It's just the efficiency that has been dropping off recently. And now with Drake London back on the field, Heineke in at quarterback and the 
these running backs um, finally going up against an easy run defense, I think the Falcons offense will bounce back in a major way. And I think this is a game where they can put up, you know, 20, 25, 30 points potentially. So I do really like B. John Robinson to bounce back this week. Make sure you get him into your lineup. If you're worried about him, go buy low um, if he is, you know, available in your league as well. And then RB7 in my rankings, also a guy that people are pretty worried about, is Tony Pollard. From blowouts to touchdowns getting called back, it just hasn't worked out for Tony Pollard. He's been so, so unlucky this season. And this is a good game script. This is the type of game script we want. They are 16 and a half point favorites against the New York Giants. They're a team that ranks 25th in adjusted fantasy points allowed to running backs. And the last time we saw Tony Pollard have a good game was against the New York Giants back in week one. So let's just hope and let's just pray that Tony Pollard can score before the Cowboys pull their starters in the third and fourth quarter because this is probably going to be a blowout and we just need to make sure that the Cowboys don't score like three touchdowns on defense and special teams like they did the last time that they played the Giants. So hopefully we get a bounce back game from Tony Pollard. Um, his usage is fine. 70% of the snaps on the season, getting most of the carries, most of the routes, getting a solid target share as well. We just need to see him get some more high value touches uh, to potentially punch in some touchdowns here. So now let's get into the tier list guys that I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on. Let's start it off with the high end RB two tier. We have Javante Williams kicking off this tier as my RB 13 on the week. Before the Broncos' Week 9 bye, Javante Williams broke out in a major way, commanding 30 opportunities, including 7 targets in his last two performances. So we're looking at a guy that's now taking over this backfield fully. Another week to get healthy with the bye week, and he could legit be a league winner down the stretch. So if you guys can, go out and send some offers for Javante Williams on the cheap, because looking at this guy's rest of season outlook, he could be a real top 15, top 12 running back, and the Bills this week are 24th in adjusted fantasy points allowed to the running back position so definitely make sure that you're starting Javante Williams but more importantly make sure you're buying Javante Williams before this inevitable breakout stretch comes at the back half of the season. So uh, running back 14 for me is Alvin Kamara. And a lot of people would probably have Alvin Kamara ranked a lot higher, but I talked about him on our takeaways live stream. I'm legit concerned for his workload because not only is Taysom Hill eating into it, Jamal Williams ate in big time this past week. And even though Kendra Miller is expected to be out for this game, I don't love the matchup. The Vikings, like I said with Bijan, are really good against fantasy running backs. They're a top five run defense uh, all around in adjusted fantasy points allowed to running backs even though Kamara's getting the targets even though he's getting the workload for the most part the combination of Jamal Williams and Taysom Hill eating in plus a bad matchup it downgrades him to more of a high-end RB2 than an RB1 type of option for me this week so Running back 15, staying in the NFC South, we have Rashad White. Rashad White is one of the biggest sell highs in all of fantasy football right now. RB11 on the season on the back of three RB1 performances the past three weeks, including the best running back performance last week. So Rashad White, I talked about him as a buy low a couple weeks ago. He definitely has delivered on that, but now it's time to sell high on him because you can probably use Rashad White, who's performed the last three games, to get to a struggling Tony Pollard, to get to a Bijan Robinson who's struggling. Rashad White plus probably, uh, you know, a wide receiver three type gets you to one of those guys. And that is the type of move that you should be looking to make if you got Rashad White on the cheap or if you've been holding him all season. It's a brutal matchup on the ground for him. The Titans are top 10 against the run and White's 21 targets. The last four games are enough to get him there and enough to buoy his value. Either way, I'm still looking to sell high on him because even though he has a great workload, even though he's performed the past couple of weeks, he's just not that great of a player and he's not going to be that efficient on the ground. So that's why he's going to be always limited to like a mid RB2, but he's been performing like an RB1 the past couple of games and I want to cash out on that. So uh, RB16 for me is Jameer Gibbs. It'll definitely be interesting to see how Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery split work going forward because obviously before we saw David Montgomery get all of the work and Jameer Gibbs only was useful when David Montgomery was out of the lineup. Me and Danny actually really disagree on this point. He's much higher on Jameer Gibbs rest of the season than I am. I tend to think that Jameer Gibbs is going to be limited at about like 12 to 15 touches per game, and David Montgomery is still going to operate as the lead back in terms of overall touches, as well as the red zone work. Anytime they get inside the 20-yard line, I don't think we're seeing Jameer Gibbs out there. Regardless, it's still a top five matchup for either of these running backs, so both of them are top 18 guys. Of course, David Montgomery I had inside my top 12. Jameer Gibbs here settles in at RB 16. 
2016. So the workload is the thing we're concerned with. I don't think it'll necessarily be all the way back to what Jameer Gibbs was getting before David Montgomery was hurt, but I also don't think he's going to suddenly take over this backfield either. So uh, running back 17 for me on the week is my start of the week, Ramondre Stevenson of the New England Patriots. Three reasons that I have him as my start of the week pick. Uh, Number one, Indianapolis is 30th in adjusted fantasy points allowed to running back, so they're not good against the run. Number two, Ramondre Stevenson has been hovering in that 15 touches per game range, averaging over five targets per game over the last month, and he's been consistently over 60% of the snaps, so his workload's been pretty solid. And number three, I also face Ramondre Stevenson in my home league, so hitting the old reverse jinx here, hoping that he doesn't have a good game, but because I'm playing against him, he probably will. And like I said, the peripherals line up. He does have a really good matchup this week, so my start of the week this week is Ramondre Stevenson. Make sure to get him into your lineup um, unless you have any of the running backs that I've talked about prior uh, to Ramondre. He's a great, great option this week. So now moving on to my RB18, we have Kenneth Walker. And like I said already, James Conner would be in this spot if we knew he was healthy. This week is going to be make or break for Kenneth Walker because he's been outsnapped by Zach Charbonnet in two straight games, which is something that you never want to see if you're a Kenneth Walker manager. But I will say it's possible that Kenneth Walker has been injured the last couple of games. And that's why he's been outsnapped by Charbonnet because this week he's a full go. He's not listed on the final injury report. And if you're resident Kenneth Walker manager is really, really panicking and they're willing to sell this guy as like a low-end RB2 or something like that, then definitely send out some offers because there's a world where Pete Carroll was only playing Zach Charbonnet over Kenneth Walker because Zach Charbonnet was healthy and Kenneth Walker was not. So it's possible that we see Kenneth Walker now healthy resume his full workload, but I wouldn't go crazy with it because it's also possible that Charbonnet is eaten in because he's just a good player and this is how the backfield's going to look the rest of the season. So like I said, this is a make or break week for Kenneth Walker and keep that in mind if you guys roster him. If he has like another down performance usage wise, but he finds the end zone, he's pretty efficient. Maybe you want to sell high on him. Um, Regardless, we're going to be monitoring Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet's usage very, very closely this week. So uh, low end RB2. So let's get on to the next tier of running backs. We have Saquon Barkley all the way down here at RB19. And this might sound blasphemous for a guy that has 24, 21, 36, and 16 carries his last four games, plus 17 total targets. So the workload is not my issue. Saquon Barkley's workload is pretty much untouchable right now. My issue is that his team is implied for 11 points. Tommy DeVito is his starting quarterback, and he's playing against a defense that's second best in the NFL against fantasy running backs. So it's a horrible matchup. He has a terrible quarterback, and they're not going to score a lot of points. And it'll probably be a big-time blowout, and who knows? Saquon Barkley might not even play in the second second half because I think the uh, the Cowboys are going to romp the Giants again. They already did it back in week one. So yeah, I'm burying him in the rankings, but this is why I really don't want to start a guy that I don't expect to, to find the end zone and uh, have a chance to even get close to the end zone in this Giants offense. The workload, again, not my issue. I'd probably sell high on Saquon Barkley if he does have a good game somehow in this one um, because I'm really worried about him rest of the season without Daniel Jones and without Tyrod Taylor. It is a bad situation all around and I don't love it for Saquon Barkley. Uh, RB20 20 and 21 already actually played on the slate. They were locked into my rankings. RB20 for me was Deontay Foreman. Kind of hilarious that I ranked these guys uh, back to back. One goes for 20 plus PPR points, which is what Deontay Foreman did. So I'm glad I had him ranked ahead of Chuba Hubbard. Um, And the other one, Chuba Hubbard, goes for six PPR points. So it just kind of goes to show you Um, how volatile these back-end RB2s are because one guy goes for 20 points, the other guy goes for six. It could have very easily been flipped and Chuba Hubbard goes for 20 points and Deontay Foreman goes for six. Um, But I'm glad I had Foreman ranked ahead of uh, Chuba Hubbard going into that game. RB22 for me here is James Cook. A little worried for James Cook because his snaps and his percentages uh, dipped a little bit this past week. Against Cincinnati, he fell to just 10 opportunities after going for 15 plus opportunities for a few games in a row there. Great matchup versus the Broncos this week, but with James Cook, you got to wonder when this guy will actually become a fixture of this offense because the Bills game plan is clearly to throw the ball, throw the ball, and throw the ball some more. It's to get the ball to Stephon Diggs, it's to get the ball to Dalton Kincaid, to get the ball to Gabriel Davis, and James Cook kind of just gets the scraps. He gets whatever plays are not going to those guys. And that's not what you want from your fantasy running back. But because the Bills are a great enough offense, he's still going to find his way into the RB2 range more often than not. Because even on a 55, 60% snap share, he's going to have the opportunity to score points. He's an efficient player when he does get the ball. So keep that in mind with James Cook. He is still a viable start this week. Running back 23 for me is Brian Robinson. After failing to top more than 10 carries in four straight games, we got 18 carries out of Brian Robinson this past 
last week. The Commanders are finally starting to involve their top receivers, which is good news for their offense in general because Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, it was a crime that those guys were not getting the ball. And now that they're playing well, his role in the red zone, Brian Robinson's, is going to be that much more valuable because if they're moving the ball in offense, it means that we got more opportunities for Brian Robinson to score. And he pretty much has to score to hit on any given week because he's not getting receiving work. Antonio Gibson will take him off the field for that kind of stuff. So goal line work coming a little bit more frequently for uh, Brian Robinson. The Seahawks are about a middle of the road matchup and they are actually six point underdogs, but the workload and the fact that he has a chance to punch in a touchdown on any given week is going to make him a touchdown or bust back end RB2. Um, so decent option there for Brian Robinson running back 24 for me. Closing out this tier is Alexander Madison. And again, sell Alexander Madison before it's too late. We talked about him in depth on the um, trade targets video. He is coming off of a big performance and Cam Akers, who is now out for the season with a torn Achilles, will upgrade his value on the open market. So his biggest backfield competition now out for the year. I bet good money that some people are going to view him as a rest of season mid RB2 in most leagues because of the workload that he got early on in the season. But the bottom line is with Alexander Madison, he's still not good. That's the bottom line. He's not a good running back. And the Saints run defense is very, very strong this week. So I would definitely try and sell him before this game, before people remember, oh yeah, Alexander Madison wasn't actually good before Cam Akers got there either. And they might be blinded by the fact that he had a good game and Cam Akers is out for the season. So try and sell high on Alexander Madison if you can. Take Mike Evans and Alexander Madison and go up and try and get a stud wide receiver like Devontae Adams or like somebody like that, like Brandon Ayuk or something. See if you can sell high on the prospect of Alexander Madison getting a ton of work because that's probably what's going to happen, but he's probably not going to do a whole lot with it. So let's get into the flex plays here. RB25, we have Devin Singletary. I already talked about it with Damian Pierce, but brutal matchup for Singletary against the Bucks last week, and he did post a 75% snap share. So that's the good that we can take out of week nine. That's going to make him a decent flex play in this matchup against a pretty strong Bengals run defense as well. Because with Damian Pierce out, we know that Devin Singletary is going to get all the work. It's not a great matchup, but it's definitely a better matchup than he had last week against basically the best run defense in the league in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So keep that in mind with Devin Singletary. He's a solid play, but he uh, is not a great one, um, knowing that the matchup is still pretty rough. Then we can group these next two guys together, Jalen Warren and Najee Harris. I have at RB26 and RB27, respectively. Um, Warren has been an RB2 or better in pretty much every game this year, except for two, scoring a high floor like 10 to 13 points per game. Um, Najee Harris, meanwhile, has double-digit PPR points in three straight weeks, so we're actually seeing him kind of turn it on a little bit and play a little bit better. Regardless, both of these guys are flex options because they do cannibalize each other in a not very good offense, but the offense has looked a little bit better now with Deontay Johnson back on the field. Hopefully, George Pickens can get more involved this week, and these two running backs have a chance to actually find the end zone now with this offense moving the ball a little bit better. So, staying in the AFC North, we have running back 28 for me, Jerome Ford. Uh, Ford was back to his full work workload last week, but this week presents a brutal matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens rank fourth in adjusted fantasy points allowed to the running back position. So Ford is nothing more than an RB3 flex play. If he was in a good matchup, he'd be all the way in like probably my top 20 or top, uh, top 22 running backs, but he is in a horrible matchup this week. So I'm downgrading him for that reason. RB29 for me is Zach Charbonnet. Uh, Kenneth Walker is finally back healthy, as I kind of already talked about in depth, supposedly with no limitations um, as he wasn't on the final injury report. So Charbonnet, probably sees a bit of a downgrade from his workload that he's seen the past couple games. Um, they're also six-point favorites against Washington, too. So I would expect this to be a less favorable game script for Charbonnet, who's the guy that plays mainly when the Seahawks are losing. Uh, but I suppose you could do worse if you're desperate. So um, Kenneth Walker and Charbonnet, that's kind of how I feel about this backfield. And then RB30 here, we have uh, Gus Edwards, who played 18% of the snaps this past week, but he has six touchdowns over the last three games. So even though he hasn't been on the field very much, anytime they get inside the five-yard line, Gus Edwards is coming in to punch that thing in. So that's why he has value on this given week. But aside from his goal line role, he is volatile as hell because Keaton Mitchell will probably earn more playing time after his performance last week. Justice Hill just played 64% of the snaps last week, basically a three-way timeshare. And they're playing against the Cleveland Browns, who are a top five defense against the run. So Gus Edwards, I don't care that he's scoring a lot of touchdowns. He basically has to score or he's going to be completely useless for fantasy. So again, if you can sell high on Gus Edwards off the back of these touchdown performances. Definitely go out and do that. Now let's close out this video with five deep league flex plays. These are guys to play if you are absolutely desperate, which I'm sure some of you guys are with Swift, with Mostert, all these guys on bye week. I'm sure you're looking to your bench options to try and throw out um, some running back options here. So 
Tyler Algier, Kareem Hunt, Tajay Spears, Keaton Mitchell, Antonio Gibson, and A.J. Dillon. That closes out my top 36 running back rankings with Algier, with Spears, with Gibson, and Dillon. They're all kind of dart throws and split backfields. You're kind of just hoping for the best. I would say that's the case with all of these guys, but especially with like Gibson and Spears, it's completely dependent on game script. If the Seahawks get out to a big lead, then Gibson's going to have a role. If the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get out to a big lead, then Tajay Spears is going to have a role. Kareem Hunt and Keaton Mitchell, both of these guys are in ambiguous backfield splits so you're kind of just hoping for touchdowns and big plays all of these guys honestly you're just closing your eyes and hoping for the best if you have to start them because none of them are good options you would only be starting these guys if you were really really screwed or if you're in a really really deep league format so that is the end of the running back tier list again if I helped you set your lineup the least you could do is leave me a like down below subscribe to the channel if this is the first time you're checking us out make sure to check out all of our other content as well wide receiver tier list trade targets uh, matchups that matter all that good stuff is out and live for you guys to help set your lineups this week. And also make sure if you guys want access to our bonus content, our Dynasty Rankings Manifesto, going through a big update. I just did a sweeping update of my own rankings yesterday. Updated all my 2024 prospects as well. So definitely check that out. That is available on flockfantasy.com. Promo code FSE will get you 30% off. You're definitely going to want to sign up over there. Trade calculator uh, for Dynasty Leagues and Redraft Leagues coming very, very soon. Definitely really excited about that. And also going to be writing up some articles on uh, rest of season strength of schedule to help you guys make a playoff push, make a championship push. So you're going to only get those when you check out um, flockfantasy.com. Make sure to check out the site if you're interested. But with that being said, peace out and we'll talk to you soon.